Oh my goodness, you guys. Stephanie sent me a notion that she said I had to try. And so that's what we're going to do today. Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we are going to do another Notion demo and review. This is a Notion I have never, ever, ever, ever tried before but I have seen Stephanie use a dozen times and it has definitely piqued my interest. So in today's video we're going to open the Notion because I haven't even opened it yet. I'm going to use it for the first time right here on camera. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts and opinions about this and tell you where you can pick one up if this is something you're interested in. Spoiler alert, I did say I've seen Stephanie use this, so I know it works. I just haven't figured out how to do it yet, though it looks pretty simple when she uses it. The bottle says that you use this instead of a starch or a starch alternative, like Mary Ellen's. It will add volume and inhibit fraying to your fabric, and you will use it with the Easy Press pen or a mist bottle to press seams beautifully flat and we're going to test all of that. But first, let me walk you through how you're gonna set this up. So to start with, you're gonna have a pen that comes completely empty and you're gonna have a solution that you need to use in the pen. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take off the clear cap up here, not the one down here. If I remove this white cap, I'm gonna have a nib just like I would have on a highlighter or a marker. I'm just gonna leave that capped. I'm gonna take this top off and it says on the pen, press seams like a pro. So we'll see. And then I'm going to open this up and there was a seal, but I already removed it. There's a seal on here you want to take off and put that back on. And I've got this little red cap that I can just take off, which is going to let me just kind of squeeze the solution right here into my pen very slowly and gently so that I don't overfill this. I want to make sure that the solution doesn't go too far above the label on this pen because I know when I put this cap back on, I know that that's going to push some of it out and I actually overfilled it. So I'm just going to dump those few drops back into my big bottle. There we go. That should be good. Don't want to waste a single drop. It's only a four ounce bottle can't afford to spill it. All right, the last thing that we got to do is prime our pen, just like you would do with a marker or some other highlighter where the nib hasn't gotten wet yet. And that's really simple to do. I'm going to grab a couple pieces of fabric and I'm going to take the cap off. I'm going to shake this up a little bit and I'm just going to take the nib of the pen and push it down just like you would with a pen or a fountain a couple of times until liquid starts to kind of come out of the tip. And that's going to be really helpful for you because anytime you use this when you're starching, you're probably going to want to do that as well. So if you ever go to draw this on your fabric and you're not, you're, the nib isn't wet and you can't get any solution out, you just want to push down on it to get it to release a couple of drops of that solution. Now for the real test. We need a pressing surface. I've got my very well-loved pressing board right here. I'm going to turn my iron on to the highest setting, and I've already prepared a few blocks that we can use to test this with. We're going to do three different nine-patch blocks pressing the seams. We're going to do one with nothing, one with Mary Ellen's, and then one with our precision stick. And to make sure that I know which one's which. I'm going to label them with a water-soluble marker. I'm going to put a big P on this one for precision stick. I'm going to put a big M on this one for Mary Ellen's. I'm going to put a C on this one for control. So again, the green one is going to be my control. I'm going to press this with just a dry iron and no added steam, clapper, none of that stuff. I'm going to press the yellow one with Mary Ellen's Best Press, and I'm going to press this block down here with the gray. I'm gonna press this using my handy dandy Acorn Precision Piecing Product Pen. And we're gonna take a look at this at the end and see which one appears to lay flatter. But before we do all that, I gotta wait for that iron to heat up. Let's kill the time with a joke. What is the leading cause of dry skin? Towels! <laughs> Iron's nice and hot. I'm just going to smooth this out. I'm gonna grab my dry hot iron that has absolutely no water in it 
and I'm just going to apply some heat to those seams. I'm going to leave it sit there because this is what pressing is, my friends. It is not moving the iron back and forth, although you can certainly do that if you want to. The idea here when you're pressing is if you leave the iron on the seam, you're applying pressure down and they don't like you to move the iron around when you're pressing your blocks because you could, if there's bias edges in your block, you could have a tendency to stretch it out and distort the block. That said, I iron all the time and it's fine. Just be gentle if you know you've got some stretchy sides. All right, so this is my block. It's nice and pressed. It could be a little bit flatter in there, and I know if I would have used Steam or Mary Ellen's, I would have got this super flat. I even know if I would have used my clapper, it would have been even more flat, but this is a control. I want to test dry iron versus Mary Ellen's versus the precision pen. So I'm gonna let this cool. I'm gonna set it over here to cool on its own, not under anything. Now we're going to do the Mary Ellen's and remember, oh yes, this one's going to be a little difficult. So I'm going to spritz it with some Mary Ellen's and I'm going to lose this M that I drew because this is a water soluble pen and I don't want to write on it with something else. So we're going to spritz it and you're just going to have to trust me that the yellow one is the Mary Ellen's. That's about how much Mary Ellen's I would normally use on a block. Yes, really three squirts. I'm gonna grab my iron and I'm going to press it the same way I did the other block. I'm not gonna do the back and forth. I'm just gonna let it sizzle up all of my starch on my seams. And I'm gonna wait. This could take a second. How about another joke? What starts with a W? and ends with a T. No, really, W-H-A-T. It really does. Get it? The word what starts with a W and ends with a T? It was funnier in my head. All right, there is our, ooh, yeah, see, I love Mary Ellen's. This is our Mary Ellen's block, and you know what? Just for good measure, since I'm not going to spritz it again, I'm going to write that M back on there, and I'm going to set that aside. All right, so the last one is going to be our precision pen. And so what I'm going to do is take my pen and I'm going to push it so that some of that solution comes out and I'm just going to draw on the seam. I want to get the solution out on the seam. And remember, I am I'm actually being very generous with this. I am forcing liquid to come out on every seam and then I'm using the nib to just kind of smooth it down. All right, now all of my seams are nice and wet and I'm just going to apply my hot iron to it. There's one side. I got all the steam billowing into my face. Wow. All right, so here are my three blocks, fully pressed with their respective methods. This block over here is my control, and honestly, the block feels a little flimsy because I didn't put any starch in the fabric whatsoever, and the seams are not laying as flat as they could. I don't think you're going to be able to see that on camera. Maybe you can, but it's a little, like right here where the fabric folds under, you can kind of see the seam is elevated a little bit. We want that to be as flat as possible. Ideally, your block with all of its seams should look like a nice sheet of paper. This one is with the Mary Ellen's and those seams are really, really nice and flat. I, I mean, you all know what a Mary Ellen's block looks like. This is flat. But here's the thing. This precision stick, I feel like these seams are either as good as the Mary Ellen seams and maybe even in some areas just a hair better. Now, the feel of it, I put starch all over this block. So this has got a little bit more body, whereas I only applied the chemicals to the seams. So this block feels 
a little flimsier than my Mary Ellen's block. See, if I hold them both up, this one kind of drapes a little bit more than the stiff one does. See how the corner on this block is starting to fold in on its own, whereas this one's just kind of straight up on its own. This one doesn't have as much body, but it shouldn't because I didn't put solution over the whole block. I only put it in the seams where it mattered. There's one more use case for this that I think would be pretty cool. Let me get a pressing stick. So this is the Poplar Presser that Yvette sells in her shop. And I know most of you probably already have one because you got one in a Creative Notions box or you've already bought one to support her. If you haven't seen this yet, this is basically a pressing stick. Her husband hand makes every single one of them and she sells them in her Etsy shop. And the idea here is this is, this is a tool that allows you to press your seam. She uses it to press her seams open, though you can use this to press your seams to one side or the other. The benefit for using a pressing stick like this is that you are pressing just the seam, not the whole block. So on those blocks where you're going to have some bias edges like half square triangles or pinwheels, you can be sure that you're only applying heat where it needs to be. So this tool with this popular presser from Yvette's uh, Etsy shop, I think would be a really good tool. What I could do is set my seam on the popular presser, just like I'm doing right there take my precision pen and just kind of expose or whatever the right word is there, get some of that liquid out and just run it along the seam. Don't need to put it anywhere else. Grab my iron and just set it. Oh, did you hear that sizzle? Just set it on top of the seam. I don't do anything else. This is pressing the seam and nothing else. When I'm using the popular presser, I do kind of rock it back and forth <laughs> because I want to make sure I'm getting the whole seam, but I'm not moving my iron and I'm guaranteeing that I'm pressing the seam. And then bonus use, if you really wanted to, I can use the flat side of it as a clapper and all a clapper does, I'll do a future video on this, but basically all a clapper does is it applies pressure to the fabric as it's cooling and it absorbs the heat from the fabric to help it cool faster. And we all know that fibers have memory in them. So when you heat it up, you're setting where it needs to go, but as it's cooling, it's kind of changing its mind a little bit and when you use a hard surface or a flat surface like a clapper or some other tool to kind of apply pressure and keep it in that position while it's cooling down you're helping to really get an even crisper seam oh my goodness take a look at this one so this seam right here is the one that i use the poplar presser on and the pen combination remember i exposed the back side and then i set the clapper on top of it while it was cooling down and this seam, the ridge, when you run your finger over it, it's not as bumpy as this seam down here. I definitely feel more bulk running over the fabric right here. This is still a flat seam, but this is even flatter. I do wanna test that theory though. Let's use this as a clapper on the Mary Ellen's and see if we can get the same results. So I'm just gonna spritz one area. Gonna set my nice hot iron right on top of that. And as soon as I take the iron off, I'm going to put my makeshift clapper on it and see if I can get that really, really nice and flat. And you'll notice I'm only doing one of the seams because I wanna feel the difference. How long do you know to leave a clapper on your block? Well, until the fabric around it feels cool or a few seconds, maybe a minute. There's no wrong answer, just long enough for the fabric to cool down. The longer you let it cool, the better results you're going to get. This trick made it even flatter over here. So, just feeling my seams. Honestly, the precision pen gave me the same results as Mary Ellen's. And the clapper thing, the clapper trick, really helped those seams to lay even flatter. Especially when I compare it, oh yeah, to the control. Yeah, definitely. So final thoughts. What do I think of this? Well, I think this is a great tool. It definitely works as well as Best Press, which is exactly what the pen said it did. But there's not always a use for this. It depends on what you're doing. Obviously, if I am ironing yardage and I'm starching it, I'm going to go for my Best Press because 
this is easier to use for big pieces of fabric. But if all I'm trying to do is press my seams, this is a really good alternative because I don't have to get my ironing station messy. I don't have to spray this into the air. I can just apply the solution exactly where I need it to be and press it and I'm gonna get the same results. Plus, can we just talk about how portable this is? This would be super easy to take to a retreat and it would last you the whole thing and you wouldn't have to take a gallon of best press. So yeah, if my fabric was pre-starched, I would take this to work on blocks in a heartbeat, absolutely. All right, so I used two notions technically in this video, and if you wanna pick up either one of those, I'm going to link to each of them in the first comment down below this video. Leave me a comment down below, let me know what you thought of this notion. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and come on back Friday nights at 8.30 where we sew live right here on YouTube. I'll see you guys all later, bye.